All of the observational studies which attempt to determine how safe and effective vaccines are depend on having good estimates of the proportion of people in the population who are vaccinated compared to the unvaccinated. But the problem is that it's very difficult to be able to get that estimate accurately. Now in the UK there's something of a problem here because the Office for National Statistics claim that the proportion of unvaccinated adults is 8%. That's a very low number. Whereas if you look at the United Kingdom Health Security Agency estimates, they give a much higher figure, around about over 20%. So what is the correct figure and why does it matter? Well, it matters because if the proportion of unvaccinated is underestimated, then any data that you have on COVID infection rates or mortality rates when you're comparing the unvaccinated with the vaccinated would be exaggerated for the unvaccinated. This 8% claim seems to have become the accepted one rather than the higher proportion estimated by UKHSA. And indeed, it was the 8% claim that was made in the recent controversial BBC2 documentary called Unvaccinated. And I challenged this claim in blog articles. And what's interesting is what Hannah... If that survey was truly representative of the UK adult population, then with a, with a sample that large, seeing that there were 24% who were unvaccinated would mean, by any kind of statistical analysis, be it classical statistics or basic statistics, it would be, you'd always end up with it being virtually impossible that the true proportion of unvaccinated could be anything less than 20%. So we really need to examine this. Well, it turns out you can actually go to the website of the company which conducted the survey on behalf of the BBC, and I can provide the links uh, below, and you can download the full data set. So what I'm going to now do is show you something very, very curious about the survey and the way the data was presented there. Well, this is the website for the survey carried out for the BBC. And on its front page, you can see that it says it was a sample of 2,570 UK residents, of whom 664 were never vaccinated. And that's a proportion of 26%, even higher than what was implied on the programme. So it's a representative survey. It was carried out between the 27th of April and 2nd of May this year. And you can actually download the report. OK, so here we have the downloaded file. It's an Excel spreadsheet with four worksheets on it with a title page here. It was just saying when it was taken out. There's an index page which explains the questions. There's the actual data in here, which I'm going to come back to in a minute, because first I just want to pick out something in the background here. And this is crucial because it's, here it talks about the survey. It's, it's telling you that it was nationally representative sample. But here's the thing. It says here the responding sample is weighted to the profile of the sample definition to provide a representative reporting sample. The nationally representative profile is based on the census data collected by the Office for National Statistics. So it seems that they're doing some kind of a weighting here based on the ONS data. Well, let's see what that actually means. Well, let's go into the data itself. So you can see that here's the total number of people in the sample, 2,570. And of course, that's not going to be weighted. So there were 2,570 people in the survey. So they're going to assume that there really were 2,570 respondents here. So then let's just compare these, what's happening with this weighting. How representative was the sample compared to the ONS data? Well, males, you can see, were slightly underrepresented. So they've pushed that up from the actual 47% to, to 49%. Well, so there's a bit of difference there. And obviously females were slightly overrepresented, so they pushed that, the weighted one is pushed down a bit. So what about the age? Were they significantly different compared to the ONS sample? Well, let's look at the 18 to 24 year olds. No, there's almost no difference there. They were slightly underrepresented. There was 10%, so they pushed that up to the true proportion, which should be 11%. 25 to 34 year olds, absolutely spot on, 17% in the sample and 17% is the true population. 35 to 44, 
Well, they were slightly overrepresented, so there were 20% of those. They're, they're saying there should have been only 16%, so it was a bit of a waiting there. 45 to 54, almost perfect, just very, very slightly overrepresented there. The 55 to 64 year olds, very, very slightly underrepresented, so it goes from 15 to 16%. 65, 74, again, slightly underrepresented, so the weighted one goes up higher. And the 75 plus, again, slightly underrepresented, so that goes up. But not really much difference. There's, there's barely any difference here. And then you look at the social standings. These are these sort of social classes, A, B class, almost no difference there. So we're just comparing the unweighted with the, the second line and the weighted is the top line here. So no differences here. No differences in social class. No differences in uh, regions of England, North England, you can see here, all the same. The regions, Wales and South West. These are, so you can see that these are all very well accurately represented. So where's the difference coming in? Well, I'm going to scroll to the end here, to the crucial thing. So if we scroll to this thing, which is the net unvaccinated, this is where you see there's a massive difference coming in. We see the 664, which is the 26% unvaccinated. But of course, they're going to weight that according to this bizarre Office for National Statistics estimate of 8%. And that means they're going to treat those 664 responses for the unvaccinated just making 216, which is completely insane. doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And you can see, if we scroll back to the beginning here, that's why when we now look at the counts, all of these counts are adjusted based on that weighted difference from the 26 to 8. So there's the net unvaccinated. And although all these ones, which are, yes, I've received two doses, but unlikely to uh, have any further doses, those are also, those are also been scaled right down. In fact, if we just scroll down here, you'll see something else curious. Here, in the actual survey, you can see that the number who said either they'd never been vaccinated or will not get any further dose is at 825. That's an incredible number. That, that's 32%. With their weight, it drops to about half. So what can we really conclude from all of this? Well, I think that we can now safely conclude that the Office for National Statistics claim of 8% UK adult population unvaccinated is a massive underestimate. I'm pretty sure now that it is at least 20%. What this means is that all of the analysis which claim effectiveness and safety of the vaccine based on the ONS estimates of the proportion of unvaccinated to vaccinated are biased. They are massively overestimating the COVID rate and the fatality rate of the unvaccinated compared to the vaccinated. And this casts serious doubts on the true efficacy and safety of the vaccines.